my logo um, made in 3D, I'm going to create the sweeps that spin around it, and um, I'm going to make those out of curves and a generator. So I'm going to uh, create uh, under my spline menu, so remember splines are just curves, there's a whole bunch of preset types of splines. I'm going to make a helix shape. So a helix is, um, here we go, it's quite large. A helix is just a curving circular uh, curve. And um, this is going to be the path that my shapes run along to create the sweep effect. Now when I create a helix, it's lying on its side, facing towards me along the um, z-axis. I want my helix up and downwards so that my, spi my, my sweeps can spiral sort of up and around my, my logo. So I'm going to select this helix and in the object tab and its attributes, I'm going to change the plane that it's created in. And I want it in the xz plane. So x is horizontal, z is depth, that's where the base of it sits. So now I've got this helix shape, it's quite big, completely surrounding my, um, my logo. But this is going to be the path that these shapes go along. Now if I'd wanted to, I could have gone to my create menu and in the spline uh, there is a pen tool. I could have drawn a path if I wanted to, but uh, that would be really tedious. So I'm just going to use this helix which is built in and makes my life a lot easier. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust the helix settings to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to use the move tool to center it on my logo so that my logo pretty much sits right in the middle of it. So I'm going to adjust the, um, I'm going to adjust the start radius so that's how, how tight that helix spiral is uh, at the base and I want it just a little bit bigger than my logo. I'm going to build this brick wall around it. I want it a little bit bigger than this. I can change these values later so I'm not too worried exactly how big it is. But I want it to just kind of fit around the logo and I've used my move tool to move that helix up and down so it's just sitting pretty much surrounding my logo. I can see it's, it's my logo's, if I look from the top, my logo's extruding backwards a little bit so I might just move the helix backwards a little bit in 3D space so that it's kind of centered on there. Again, this is all pretty rough, we can change it later if we want to. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more spirals into my helix so I get a lot of spinning motion. So to do that, I've got a setting called um, end angle. So that's how many degrees our curve goes through. And if I increase that value, I'm basically putting more turns in this helix. And I'm going to put uh, 1800 degrees in there, which gives me a whole bunch of spirals this shape. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to create that sweep. I want to create that three-dimensional kind of cylinder that spins along this helix. So to do that, I'm going to create a circle. So under my Create menu, I'm going to go to Spline, and I'm going to choose a circle. This is going to be the cross-section shape of these sweeps that run up this, um, this helix. This circle that I've created is really, really big. I want it quite small. I want it smaller, probably than the thickness of these letters. So I'm going to shrink it right down, just using the radius value, which is in the attributes for this circle. I'm going to make it quite small. Mine's about, uh, I'll make mine about 10 centimetres. Again, I can change this later, so uh, I'm not too fussy at the moment. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to create this generator that produces a 3D shape out of these two splines, or these two curves. So I'm going to go Create, Generators, Sweep. And the sweep object is created, just like an extrude, it's created as a 3D object. And what I need to do is I need to drag and drop both of these curves, both the circle and the helix, into the sweep. Now, chances are when you do this, you're going to get a really odd result. So I'm going to drag and drop those into there. Oh, I actually got what I wanted. Brilliant. What's important? You might have got something different. If yours looks completely different, one thing you need to be aware of with the sweep is that the order that these two curves sit inside the sweep makes a big difference. 
if I click and drag the helix above my circle, and I'm just going to watch that little white arrow on the cursor very carefully, I'm going to move it until the arrow is pointing in between the sweep and the circle, and I get a very different look now. I've got this kind of open-ended pot on its side. So what's happening here is the sweep is making a 3D surface using these two curves, and the order of them changes how it makes the curve. In this case, with the circle at the top and the helix at the bottom, it's taking the circle and it's running it along that helix to make that shape. If I change the order of them, it's grabbing the helix and running it round in a circle to create a tube. So the order of these shapes inside a sweep is really important. And this is the case with a lot of hierarchies in Cinema 4D, is the order that things sit make a big difference. Now that I've got my sweep set up, I can see looking at the sweep or the, 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 the sweep shape that I've got here, this is a lot thicker than the one that I had in the movie. So I'm just going to go back to that circle which controls the cross section, and I can change the size of it, which changes how thick the sweep graphic is going to be. And again, all of this stuff you can change later on, so um, uh, it's really easy to adjust. So I'm going to keep going through. I'm going to set up a bunch of other things on this sweep, and then I'll come back and go through it slowly again. So the important thing now is I want to have a slightly rounded end on my sweep. If I have a look at the ends on this, they're flat um, cut-off cylinders. So on the sweep, we have in its attributes, we've got a cap, exactly the same as our extrude uh, in our Mo text. We can set a cap. So um, I'm going to set a cap on the end of my sweep. I'm not going to set one, sorry, I'm going to set a fillet cap on the end of my sweep. I'm just going to keep a normal cap uh, on the start, which is at the bottom, and we'll see why, that, why I'm doing that shortly. So the end cap, I'm going to set a fillet, uh, fillet cap. I'm going to add some steps into it, which is going to let it become curved. So remember we talked about this last week. If I go to my display menu and turn on these lines, I can see the actual details, the actual individual um, little sort of tiled polygons that make up all of our 3D objects. If I don't have many steps in my end cap here, I can't get a nice smooth curve. So I'm going to put a bunch of steps in there. I'll put in 10. That will be plenty. I can change the radius if I want to. Now one thing you'll notice is as I change the radius, I've only set a fillet, a fillet, not a fillet, a fillet on one end. If I change the radius of this, um, I'm now getting this nice tapered kind of shape along the length of my sweep. So I want the start of this to be a nice rounded taper, a nice rounded end, and then the, the end of it will be tapered. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make this tapered end smaller by changing the size of the circle to even smaller. I'm going to put mine down to one, one centimetre. So now I've got the shape I want, but it's too long. I don't want it all the way a length, along the length of the spiral. I just want a short section of it. Um, and I've got a bunch of settings in the sweep that controls this. So if I go to my sweep object, if I have a look in its object tab, the important thing are these end and start growth values. These control where the start and end of the sweep are. And I can adjust those values to trim or lengthen this object. And now I'm starting to get something that looks a little bit more like what I want. Okay, so I've just trimmed the, the start growth value a little bit. I've got a value of what I've got in there, 90 at the moment. And this gives me this nice tapered worm shape. I'm pretty happy with that for now. Uh, the only thing is this is still quite fat at one end. So I'm going to go back to that cap and just make it a little smaller. Well, quite a bit smaller. 
So I'm adjusting the size of the cap, the start growth value, and the size of the circle to control the overall shape of this particular sweep. So there's a lot of settings you can change there. There's a lot of variation. Um, I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. So that's pretty good.